Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to jump into Fusion and go over how to use the Transform node. This is gonna be one of the most common nodes you are going to be using when creating Fusion compositions. So I figure a dedicated video showing you how to use it and when to use it is probably gonna be beneficial to you guys. So let's create a Fusion composition. We'll just leave it default settings, not super important right now. And I'm gonna jump across into Fusion. Now, Bear with me, I'm just going to quickly create a little scene here. So here is our little scene. We've got our little text and a little bit of a background and we have our transform node here. So if I click on the transform node in the inspector, we'll drop that down. You can see we don't have a whole lot of options. We have our center point, which is exactly like the position of the whatever it's transforming. So we have the X being the horizontal and the Y being the vertical. We then have the pivot point and the pivot point being sort of, I guess the origin where these transformations will take place. We'll show you how that sort of works in a little bit. And then we have size being just general scale. And then your aspect is going to effectively be like your aspect ratio in terms of, it's basically just controlling the height or the squeezingness. Then you have your rotation, pretty simple. You can flip it, you can flip it horizontally, vertically. It's hard to see with nothing in it. Then you have how the edges sort of react. Again, we'll show you how all this works and nothing really important down the bottom. And then in the settings sort of tab here, we can add motion blur and all that sort of stuff. But mainly this is what we're using it for. So the transform node is going to be used to control the position, scale, rotation of your individual sort of pieces to your composition. Now I'm aware that the text node and many other nodes have their own controls to position things and resize things around the scene. But when you're creating a large composition, it is important to keep things nice and neat. And when you're going to be linking different commands to different nodes, it's good to save all your information dedicated. So what I like to do is create my shape and then to control and move that shape, I'm going to use a dedicated transform node. So let's do that. So it will always come at the end of the hierarchy. So shift space, transform. So this transform node is going to control everything that is plugged into the input of this node. So everything that comes before it in the hierarchy. So now if I move this, obviously it's going to move the circle. We can make the circle bigger or larger. And we, can, uh, we can't really show you how to flip, but we can all rotating because it's a circle, go me. But the same thing for the text. So if we want to control the size and positioning of the text, I would create another one, transform node. And here we can obviously create, change the size. We can do all that sort of stuff. We can rotate it, whatever we need to do. And here we can show you the flipping. Looks almost like Russian. And so this is how it all works. You want to control each individual aspect of your composition with the transform node. Now, generally what I would do here is I would rename this one and I'd rename it to, I guess, circle transform. And that's so it's easily searchable when I'm in the graph editor, the spline editor and the keyframe editor, because you don't wanna be looking for transform one and two, you wanna know exactly what it is after. And this one I would rename to, I guess, text transform, so I can find that. Now. As I said, the transform node controls everything plugged into the input. So generally this is how I'd work it here. And then I'd create another one after the very final merge node here. And I would call, I would rename this one, the main transform. That would tell me that the main transform is going to control everything in this particular composition. So as you can see, this controls everything that came before it. So the reason we're using it in this particular way is just so that it is easy and simple for you to control your different objects and it makes it much easier when you have large compositions. And you can do some really cool things. So like edges currently set to canvas. So if you were to scale something down, it just shows what's behind in the rest of the canvas, but we can actually set that to wrap. And then we get this cool thing here where it kind of comes in and you can see how we can create some cool effects, duplicate. Probably not gonna do too much. And we got mirror as well, which is not really showing too much here, but you can see like the wrap one, that's kind of cool. And obviously it works for all of them. So if we were to move that down, obviously we've got transform node there and we can do that for the main transform too. So we can do mirror. So as I scale that down, 
it's just like this infinite image that keeps coming and coming, coming, coming. And we can zoom in. Pretty cool how you can do all these different things. And the best part is, is because this is done on a node basis is we can always just reset these parameters if we wanted to. So we can just set it back to canvas, set it back to canvas and all, and set this one to canvas. And now we just are left with our original image. Now your transform node will always have your input that's going to allow it to control everything that comes into it, has its output going onto the next object and it will have a masking option. Generally I don't use the effect mask input that's, this is generally how I will use the transform nodes. So hopefully that has sort of cleared a few things up for you in terms of when to use them, how to use them. Obviously it's not a mega in-depth tutorial, but I know there's a lot of you out there that just sort of don't quite understand how the transform node works. That's what this video was for. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. And until the next video, see ya.